Next up we have uh, Kip Coers and uh, Kip Farms in Purdy, which is in the southwest corner of Missouri. His 4,000 plus acres of corn and 600 acres of soybeans are located in seven southwest counties of Missouri. He cuts 2,500 acres of silage per year, grows green beans and winter spinach for a regional cannery. He contracts for poultry and boiler, broiler production and is farm manager of an additional 5,000 corn acres in Missouri for a New Zealand large dairy operation. In 06, Kip set the world record for soybean yields when he harvested, get this, 139 bushels an acre in his contest fields. The next year, though, he broke his own yield record by harvesting 154 bushels per acre. And though he didn't beat his personal best in 08 because of uncooperative spring weather, he still harvested an impressive 117 bushels per acre and averages 100 bushels an acre in his overall farm production. Even with his, with his huge success as a soybean grower, Kip's main interest is corn. Before 08, Kip had won seven NCGA titles for irrigated corn, and when the NCGA results were announced in December of 08, he came away with a first place national win in AA no-till strip-till, non-irrigated, a second place national win for rich till irrigated, along with an additional four first place state wins for Missouri. 2009 was a difficult year for a lot of the U.S. and Missouri was no exception. But regardless of wet, cold growing conditions, Kip again took four first place state wins in irrigated and no-till strip till irrigated. During the last three years, Kip has spoken with growers all over the U.S. sharing what he continues to learn about raising the corn and bean yields on his acres. In August of week, Kip hosted a three-day field event at his farm, which attracted approximately 2,000 growers from all over North America, including Canada. Kip and his wife, Michelle, have two sons, Noah and Naaman, and a daughter, Marissa. Kip is here today courtesy of Pioneer Hybrid International Incorporated. Please help me in giving Kip a warm welcome. Now, uh, I woke up this morning, I looked outside, and, and it was snowing. And I leave Friday from uh, Detroit, and I'm going to uh, Brazil. And I, uh, so, you know, the next thing I did was I looked and seen if uh, what the weather was. It's supposed to be 96 or 98. Anybody got some sunscreen to hold on me? <laughs> Where is my technical help? That's like the way up there. Where is So, anyways, I walked out there a while ago and uh, it's snowing again. Last week at home it was in the 60s, but uh, it's not uh, quite that warm here, but I guess that uh, I better find a lot of sunscreen because I'm, still, I'm a pretty white boy. And uh, I'm not sure what 96 is going to feel like from the snow to 96. is going to be quite a deal. Nine and a half hours later, we're going to be wham. But, uh, Notice this corn up here in this upper left hand corner. I thought it's both these mics caused me some feedback. This corn up here in this upper left hand corner, that's a 31N28, that's about a 120 day hybrid. Uh, you probably don't grow that up here in Michigan. This one I ran trees back in 2005, made about 350 bushels of corn. But you know what the most important part about this whole entire picture is? That corn's green from top to bottom. We combined this corn a couple days after this picture was taken. Would anybody care to guess what the moisture was on that corn? Jack, what do you think it was? 14.3. Everybody's corn and soybeans in this entire room should ripen totally green. 
all your weeds do, so should your corn and soybeans. What this enables us to do is it packs on more starch so it all turns into more test weight. This year our test weight was down a little bit, but it was only average 58, 59, 60 pound test weight, but typically we're going to be 60 to 63 pounds. So what we try to do is keep that plant alive, happy, and healthy through this entire growing season. Pack as much starch as we can. But you know, keep in mind, I got a little southern accent. I'm not from Michigan. You know, so what I do in southwest Missouri might not necessarily work up here in Michigan. But hopefully you're going to come away today with a few new ideas to take home and try and see what I can do on my farm. See what's going to work for you. I live here in southwest Missouri. Most people associate with the other side of the state in the boot hill. But in reality, I live over there. Right there is Branson. I live about an hour away from Branson. How many people have been to Branson? I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, there's just not much in Branson besides hills, trees, rocks, and poplars. So if you don't know what a holler is, that's a little draw in between two hills, and you holler, and it echoes. How we raise up. About 3,000 acres of green beans typically. Uh, this is how I've learned how to pay close attention to detail with the green bean production or other vegetable production. Green beans are relatively easy compared to like spinach or kale or collards or mustard greens. Also raise some sweet potatoes, squash, all kinds of different vegetables. You name it, I've probably tried it. But uh, whenever corn, as Jerry was saying there earlier, that you know these markets jump up, and it's a lot easier to raise four or five dollar corn than it is a bunch of vegetables. When I was talking to Tyler Bunch down in Brazil, uh, a couple weeks ago, he farms pretty big down there. He writes for Corn Soybean Digest. And their break even on Brazil, like Jerry was saying, on the, uh, uh, they sell them in dollars and they convert that back to Rios. Break even in Brazil today, or this actually two weeks ago, there'll be more now. 52 bushels of acres break even. So until they kind of get a few of their th issues worked out down there, you know, I'm not too sure there's going to be much competition for us, other than they just got this mass amount of land. That's just some Italian flat beans. As you can tell, they prove they lay flat on the ground. We get a lot of white mold, tip rot, Syrian disease, lots of disease pressure. So we've been using fungicides on these for about 25 years. So for me to take fungicides in our normal production acres, it wasn't no big deal. That's not a light reflection. That's the actual color of the soil. It's called Natonia Red. It's a silt loam. The best thing about this for contest is it dries out very nice in spring and it warms up very nice in spring. But everything that's great in spring comes back in haunch in the middle of summer because it dries out and it gets hot. So all of our red ground is irrigated, all of our black ground is non-irrigated. We have no plow on our farm anywhere. This ground percolates very, very well. So we don't really, that's one expense I don't have to put up with. That's just a root pit. My pointer is not going to work there, I'll show you. But our topsoil is about 14, 18 inches deep, but if you dug a root pit down 12 foot deep, it would be red from top to bottom. We run a modest in point row planter on all of our contest acres, whether it be corn or soybeans. Uh, the modest in planter is the most accurate planter on the market. All of our normal production acres, we run 24 row central filled John Deere planters like everybody else. But in our contest situation, we do run our monocin planter. This is just a small plant row corn. But as you can see, it plants in the V pattern, dying pattern. You know, once you set this planter, it's going to drop every seed exactly like that. I also dislike drills. I'm in your opinion, if you plant soybeans with a drill, it's no more than a semi-controlled spill. <coughs> the problem with the drill is they're fluted. They dump them out of piles. You can't control the depth. You can't control the spacing. If we want to achieve high yields on 